Well, hello everybody and welcome to another Fix It video. And this time I have another TV. This time an on, O-N-N, Roku TV. Uh, got this for free on uh, Facebook Marketplace from somebody who said, hey, it just doesn't work. There's no physical damage. I don't know what's wrong with it. And uh, they were giving it away. So I went and picked it up. And uh, this is what we got. And I don't know if you can see, it was already on because I had powered it on. I just turned it off. You could hear the sound there. If I power it on again, you can see... The backlight comes on, but there's no picture that's displayed. Could be a series of things. Could be things that I can't fix at all. But we're going to try some of the simple things that I know about Roku TVs. And for one, I'm going to try a restart with the remote. And if I recall the combination correctly, it's pressing home five times, the up button once, rewind twice, and fast forward twice. And it fixes often a black screen. It basically say, says soft, root the, uh, soft boot the Roku or soft reboot it. I've had this happen to my TV in my bedroom, which is a Roku TV as well. And this has actually fixed the black screen issue. I'm not sure if this is the same issue or not, but we're going to try it. So let's go. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. Up. Rewind. Forward. In theory... Yeah, I hit buttons again. I'm not hearing anything because it's in the middle of a reboot cycle. So let's see when this thing, if this thing comes back, if anything flashes or happens across the screen. If something comes up and I start getting sounds again. This is not looking extremely promising because usually by now it's, uh, I get the Roku background when this happens on my uh, other TV. Oh, it flashed off. A full reboot to get somewhere. Yeah, so now I got sounds happening again without actually seeing anything on the screen. Uh, this is an on TV, and I realize that the ONN version is on. I believe that's how you pronounce it. On, on, I don't know. Uh, there's also on these, uh, down here, I wish I could focus a little bit better, but on the port panel, there's also a reset switch that does a factory reset. So I'm going to try to hold this in, pressing that button. And just pressing and holding while the TV's on. It's supposed to do a factory reset eventually. All right, welcome back. And uh, you missed a little bit just because of some bad camera uh, action going on because uh, my SD card got messed up. But you didn't miss too much. Let me catch you back up on where we're at. Roll my chair. So basically, after I was doing that factory reset, the uh, the system, the light still came on as it did before, but there was still nothing on the screen. I was no longer getting sounds when I clicked the remote, and I got afraid of that at first, and then I realized that that's probably because doing a factory reset puts it back into that initial, like, Roku setup menu, and so I think I'm in the setup menu as opposed to just the normal screen menu, which I don't believe makes the, the beep sounds on the remote, so we know that that was happening, the sounds were happening, so clearly the... The unit was powering on and getting to where it was supposed to get to. You just couldn't see it on the screen. I took a flashlight and I went to look at the screen too to just make sure, even though I saw the light coming through, to make sure it wasn't a backlight issue and I couldn't see the dim like background of the, the text and stuff on the screen and I can see nothing. So the display is just not getting there. It looks like it's in fine condition. I don't see anything obvious that shows that the screen looks like it's broken or cracked anywhere. I guess it could be cracked all the way and it leaves it with the black screen. I don't really know enough about the way that cracks affect this, if the whole panel could go out very easily, um, or if there's something else that's driving this. So I pulled the back panel off, which is just a handful of screws in here, pulled everything out, and I've looked over, I've examined these boards here, these three boards, just for anything obvious that I was seeing, and I'm not seeing anything obvious. So I think right now what I'm gonna try is I'm going to try to just power back up as it is now just maybe jostling some wires or something changed action i gotta be careful because i know there's high voltage running through this is the power board over here so i don't want to touch anything with that that i don't have to um i i did notice that these these cables i didn't do anything to these cables i just pulled the back panel off they're run i can't say sloppily because it's, it's not that they're sloppy but i would expect some cable like this one to have been designed to be like very flat and perfectly in place on where it's supposed to go but it's got it's like raised up here it doesn't live nowhere it would lay flat this is just like sideways and like looping down over this board i don't know if it's just because that's the parts that they had on hand maybe they use these same cables for a bunch of different model tvs and it doesn't fit as well into this enclosure so i don't know if something could have shaken and gotten loose or uh, or if we just have a completely dead TV that I'm never going to be able to fix. So I'm going to turn the power on, 
just look at this thing to see if it comes on. And then I'm going to start unplugging kind of components one at a time, powering it back on to see if that changed anything. Uh, maybe one of these components that's connected to it, one of these boards, or maybe I think this is the Wi-Fi module. I could be wrong on that. I'd have to, I have to really look at it and find out. Um, but just to see if we get any life into this thing. So I'm going to start doing that. Let me get my power. This is just a test after basically taking it apart. So nothing has been done. Oh, same, same symptom. So let's now, and you can see backlights illuminated and staying on through this whole TV, through all these little holes and stuff. So I'm not thinking it really has anything to do with the backlight because I just think the backlight wouldn't be on at all if it was a backlight issue. So I think it's actually an issue of processing the picture to display, which might be really hard to uh, get through. But let's go next. Let's try something simple. What happens if I just disconnect this? I'm betting nothing will happen if this is the case, but I don't know. Yeah, kind of as expected, nothing happened, which is potentially to be expected. Plugging well, the speakers didn't do anything. Is this like the IR sensor? Same. Right. I mean, this is just what I'm going to be doing for a while, so I'm going to turn the camera off and just bring it back if something crazy happens. Well, something interesting happened. Ugh, can't get it to focus. Let me turn the lights off, too, so that not a glare from the screen. So, I unplugged... Come on, focus. Focus. There we go. I unplugged... It's upside... The screen is upside down right now, but I unplugged from the board the one of the two ribbon cables that come down to drive the lcd it just unplugged one of them and notice we got I, i'm pretty sure the way it works from what i understand with these things is one drives half the screen one drives the other half of the screen and i unplugged one of them and half the screen came on and half the screen is just completely white it looks really washed out and terrible, but I don't know what it should look like at this point in time. I'm curious. Okay, so. I believe that says English. <laughs> Shoot. I can't see the side of the screen I need to see. I want to get logged in, but notice that. Oh, so that's, that's weird. It does make noise. Which it was not doing previously. Uh, once I did the factory reset, it was not making noise. Let me turn the lights back on here. That would glare out the screen. Let me carefully put this thing back down. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit here. Carefully put this thing back down. Um, I'm going to unplug it, actually. Let's see, let's see what it does from the beginning. Ooh, isn't that cool? So, unplugged completely. Plug it back in. So yeah, it clearly comes up. It says Roku TV in the middle. And this is good to know what the screen is supposed to look like. No, it looks like it's in like black and white. I don't quite know. And how long does it take to get to the next stage? Okay. And then if it's here. Huh, so the remotes, oh, there it goes. So it does make noise on this screen. But it wasn't doing that when I did the reset before. That's very strange. Um, hmm. Okay, let me unplug it again. We're going to put it back down. I'm going to plug that one side back in. This board right here, and I unplugged this half of the driver. So this half is still plugged in, and that is the response that we got out of it. So let me plug this back in and see what happens
I actually didn't even see if the, the flat light flashed. I was messing with the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the backlight came on, and now we're back to experiencing the original symptoms of it just being no picture on the screen uh, as opposed to half a picture. I'm very curious, though, if I take this remote. Oh, there it goes. It's making noise. I could. It was not making noise for me before. I tried for the longest time to get it to make some noise, and it was not making any noise. That's very weird. Um, let's try to. Let's try to do the other half. Okay, something different is on the other side of the screen, but it does not look appropriate. Is it's not like the other half of the picture. Yeah, just a bunch of wavy. Bunch of wavy lines. Let's see. All right, so I think we figured out there's something wrong with this half of the screen. Like I said, I wasn't feeling too great about what this half of the screen looked like either, but we are getting somewhere. I just don't know what to do with this information. Um. Let me disconnect this board completely and take it out and so we can look at the underside of it and see if there's anything obvious that we can zoom in on uh, any better to know if there's maybe a faulty component uh, or just even get more information on this model so I can look some stuff up. All right, so here is the TCON board all removed. Uh, I've done some component testing around here just to see if there was anything that was obviously shorted and I could not find anything. I don't know if you can see it in this camera light though. You can tell on this chip, the main chip right here, there's a distinct line of a discoloration kind of going diagonally across the chip in this way. I don't know if that was, you know, just the color it is or if it's showing that, you know, something burned out in the chip. Um, and it, that's what's causing our problems. I really have no idea. Uh, amazingly, this was not screwed onto that board in any way. It actually just used these little pads right here. Uh, and there's another one here, so it's just sticky pads. I did purchase a replacement TCON board. Actually, it was only 21 bucks on uh, on eBay, shipped and everything. It's supposedly a direct drop-in replacement for this exact model TV, which is important uh, because of the screen size and all that stuff. However, I will know. I don't know if I can zoom in on that. The uh, the numbers that are right there on the original one, it's an M10 4891-03332. And then there's a series of numbers below it. This is also an M10-4891, uh, but it's a 01522 on that. I don't know what that means. I don't know uh, if that's going to cause a problem. They said it's specifically for this model, so we're going to take the word and hope that it is. Uh, all the other numbers match up, and the boards look identical. But granted, there's a lot of TCON boards that look identical to this that have completely different numbers right here. So we're going to... Put this in and see if that solves our problem. Here's the, the issue is I don't even know if this is a TK on board issue or not. We have fault finded and found if you disconnected one of them, half the screen would actually come up. It was a little washed out, which could also show a TK on board problem. But when you had both of the uh, connectors here plugged into it and working, you got nothing on the screen. Hopefully this is what our issue is and it's a relatively cheap fix. But let me see. Let me get the, the pads and stuff transferred over. Let me get the cables transferred over and get this thing in the set and uh, we'll do some testing. All right, just wanted you to see that the new TCON board is now connected in place, not making any contact with the case. Everything is good there. In view, because now is the moment of truth. It'll be upside down, so that's not to worry. But let's see if when I plug this in, what happens? Will this fix our problem? And the answer is no. Oh, I really thought that that was going to be it. I am very curious then if if I let's unplug it. If I again disconnect the same half of the board, 
will we get that same behavior of partial halfway screen mounted in? Lead me more down the route to thinking it's actually the panel itself. Yep. So this TCOM board exhibits the exact same symptoms. I wanted to prove that the TCOM board actually was like, would work in this TV. And knowing that I could reproduce this shows that the new TCOM board is compatible with the TV. But clearly, there's still something else going on here. Uh, I don't know how much more I can look at this. Because I don't know if I would have the skills or ability to repair anything else that's wrong. If this really is a screen problem. Okay, so check this out. This is kind of wild. I have a picture. It's a very bad picture. It's a, for one, it's washed out. And if you can see it on, oh, well, you can see it on the camera, there's horizontal lines going across all of the screen as well as this big spot right here on the screen. Um, and I didn't even record what I had done because I kind of didn't believe it, but I came across a YouTube video of somebody actually experiencing a very similar problem on a very similar TV, uh, where it was the, the backlight did exactly what mine does. And then the, when they unhooked one of the, the ribbon cables out of the TCON board, half the screen worked and the other half didn't. It, and it, so it was experiencing the exact same symptoms that I had. And he said basically that... Here's the TCON board. One half drives one side of the board, one half drives the other. There's clock signals that go to both of these. And apparently in this, it's, it's something on the LCD panel itself. But you can somehow, and I don't get this, which is why I didn't record it, because I didn't really have faith in it doing anything. If you put tape over the ribbon connector where the clock signals are, somehow it can bypass that bad part of the LCD. I don't know how that works, and that's what I, what I just don't understand. And you can potentially get a picture like this. This particular board has eight clock signals. I've covered all eight clock signals right now. They're really hard to do. They're really small. And I'm supposed to now go by one by one and try to like remove one of the clock signals from the tape so it gets the signal and see if I can get this thing you know, working any better. Um, and, and when this person in the video, and I'll put a link to the video in the description as well for this, they had a similar looking picture when they first started too, and eventually got it better to almost a perfectly working TV. Um, so I'm going to maybe take this thing apart, show you guys the ribbon cable, show you guys what I'm doing, see if I can cover individual clock signals with this tape and start testing them one by one because uh, it's really small and really hard to do and actually really hard to get the ribbon cable back in when you, uh, when this happens. I'm going to kind of go through this step by step and maybe take little recordings of each step along the way and see if we can get anything better than this. But wow, this is better than it was before, but obviously not really a watchable TV in this state. So apologies, the screen is still upside down, but I wanted to tell you before I take the board over to the bench and show a little bit closer, uh, currently... I've been messing with covering different traces on that ribbon cable. Like I said, it's very hard to cover just the, the specific ones. Uh, and right now I'm covering much more than just the clock traces. So that's a little confusing to me. And I still don't understand how, how having the clock signal not make it to that half of the screen makes it work. Because in my opinion, if it needs a clock, how is it working without the clock? I don't get that. This is such a baffling fix to me. This is the clearest picture I've been able to get thus far. The one item that you'll note is that there's a black bar right here across the screen. It's not terrible. It's not It's not too bad. It would make it so I wouldn't replace my main TV with this TV, which is unfortunate because this one is bigger than mine. But it'll make it for a great TV to be able to pull out for football games when I want to have another game playing at the same time. Um, and I was just going to show that the screen looks great. The colors are, are all there. I mean, it's a gray screen, but you can see if I go pull something up on... Like my Plex server. You can see it now. It's unfortunate because there's obviously some bleed here uh, that's white. That's a lot more distracting than if it was just black. Um, well, look at my Plex library. Uh, if I just played something like Stargate Atlantis, which I've been watching lately, just to see. I'll mute it so I don't get any copyright strikes. But the picture looks great for what it is. So the picture doesn't seem to be affected by anything um, except that bar there. Uh, I will take this over to the bench because I'm going to do some more testing with this and see if I can get a little bit better picture. If I covered certain traces, sometimes it wouldn't work at all. If I covered some more, sometimes I would get a picture that was like flashing in and out. Brightness would go in and out. This is the best picture quality I've gotten thus far. And it's actually 
covering the first 12, I believe it is, traces on the, uh, on the ribbon cable. It'll all make sense in a minute when I, when I show it up close, but wanted to show where I'm at thus far to see if I make this better or worse. All right, now with a better setup here on the desk, let me see if I can better explain what's going on here. This is the original Teak on board that came out of the TV. Uh, I obviously have two of them now because I purchased the one and it didn't, the replacement didn't work because it turns out the Teak on board is not the problem. So I can show you this while leaving the other one in the TV. But this connector right here is the one that goes to the half of the TV that is having issues. So this video, what it talked about was that it has the clock signals going to the TV and that it's something is screwed up on the actual panel itself on the driver board for the panel, uh, which comes in two different pieces on the TV. Maybe I'll try to show you that when I get over to the TV again. Um, but to supposedly to bypass the problem is it something with the clock interrupt or the, the clock signals. And there's eight of them on this TV. Uh, the gentleman's, I think he was showing me there's four and you can see if I zoom in little shaky there uh there's clock lines are over here you can see there's test point for the, test points for the clock lines and i've used a multimeter and figure out that each test point for the clock line goes to it looked like it was one through pins one through eight on this ribbon cable it, upon they're really close together so it's hard to get my multimeter just right in there it actually looks like it might be one through nine and one of them I pin eight might not be used because it doesn't seem to connect to a clock but either way that's neither here nor there so what I was trying to do is literally the, the guy in the video said take a piece of tape and cover up the pins and he actually said cover up the first eight pins or the, the first number of pins that go to your clock cover them all up see if you get a picture if you do then start individually trying to cover, uh, uncover a trace and see if the picture gets better or worse. And he actually did it when he covered up all his clock lines. Originally, he had horizontal bars across the screen, kind of like mine showed. Uh, and he was systematically removing his tape in order to reveal more clock lines until he found the one that seemed to be causing the problem. And he just left that one covered up and had almost a perfect picture. I wasn't getting any good signals to come through until I covered up not only all of the clock lines, but it's hard to count, but even like three pins past where the clock is. It's almost like the three pins past where the clock is are, are what is actually causing the problem. Because if I just cover up like some of these over here, I will get a picture. It'll just be, it'll fade in and out with brightness settings. It, it, it'll just be flashing at you and there's a lot more lines. So far, I've gotten the best signal by covering everything, but I, like I said, including three traces past the where the clock signal stops. So I'm not convinced it's about the clock signal per se, but I still don't understand in his video, and like I said, it's linked below, he only covered the clock signal lines and got it working. And how does it work without having the clock signal? I, I just, I'm baffled by this. You saw the picture that I had on the screen. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add some more tape because I have no idea what these traces are too. I, I think I traced it back to uh, an STV and a KON, I think this says. Uh, I don't know what those do. Uh, I'm not familiar enough with this stuff to understand what they do and why covering them would make this picture actually still happen as well as be better so i don't know if maybe uh because when i had like only 10 traces covered i had a picture but it was a little bit hazy i covered another trace over by just moving the tape a little bit and the picture got clear i moved it over and this is the clearest i've gotten it so far i haven't tried to go further so i'm gonna basically show you what i'm doing and i'm just lifting up this piece of tape i have Move it over a little bit. I'm going to make sure it still covers pin one as well because it seems to be the best if pin one is also covered. But this is now going to cover... Uh, it's not quite covered. There we go. This is now going to cover even an extra one or two traces over there. I just want to do some trial and error and see what this does. This is The tape is only making it so the connection doesn't happen. So the connection is no longer there on the ribbon cable so it doesn't see it. And I, you'll note that this is upside down because this... Uh, where this connector ribbon connector is here, it doesn't have any uh, clips. So on the this connector, you have to like it's a press fit and you push it down. It's really hard with the tape because it makes it a little too wide for the connector. On the bottom side of the board where it actually connects to, you get a um, there's some metal tabs in the side that you can slide this into and it locks into place a lot easier before clapping it. So or clap 
clasping it. So what I did is I've just, you know, since this is a straight through cable, these signals over here run down this cable and end up being on this side of it over here. So this is effectively doing the same thing. So let me go see what this does. If it does any different, I'll bring it back and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Oh, so I just wanted to show you uh, some of the different variations of things that happen with trying different pins. I haven't gotten any better signal yet, but it, look at this. You can see it's flashing brighter and darker and brighter and darker with clock, clearly with the clock cycle. Um, obviously, this is not what I wanted to do, but this is just one of the variations. I haven't found any better picture than I originally had, so I think I'm going to try a couple more things and then just go back to that and live with that bar. All right, so back to the TV, and I tested multiple different configurations with this ribbon cable, and actually had to stop because nothing I was doing was making anything better. Most of the time, I was making things worse when I'd covered different pins or different sets of pins with tape, uh, and then I realized that I was actually ripping out the contact pads on the cable down here where it connects, so it actually, <laughs> I tried to turn it on when I went back to what I thought was the original configuration that I was happy with, and I had half the screen was was uh, messed up and I looked at the ribbon cable and realized a bunch of the traces were gone. It turns out they weren't gone, they were just folded back. I was able to scrape them back forward very gently and then reseat this one last time and got the picture back to where I think it's gonna be the best for it. It's still got that black line across it, but that's the best we're gonna have. But I was talking about this issue seemingly probably meaning there's something on this board right here, which is the board that controls you know this half of the, the screen. And I, I can't see anything obviously wrong with it to even go in to try to, you know, see, hey, there's a component that's damaged and that's probably what the problem is. I have no idea what to do with it. So this is kind of going to be the final resting place for this TV, it looks like. I will admit, though, I, this fix does not make any sense to me because this board, which drives the one half of the screen, and this board drives the other half of the screen, hence the connection to the TCON board, they're not connected at all except by this board. If I'm stopping the clock signals or whatever signals I'm stopping from getting down this line, I don't know how it's got a clock or how it's got its signals to do what it needs to do. Why this fix works, it baffles me. This is just going to be one of those quote unquote fixes and though it's not going to be a perfectly 100% TV, it's going to have some problems and just be kind of like a backup TV. Uh, but it's functional at least at this point. So <laughs> just this one makes me laugh because I don't get it. Uh, but anyways, just see the TV now. Let me put this thing back together and uh, show you it in its final uh, form all screwed back together and hopefully still working. All right, here we go. TV is all back together. Let's power it on and look at that. It, uh, I mean, <laughs> could, couldn't ask for much more from a free TV. I mean, could ask for it to be perfectly functional, but you know what? I can deal with that line that's down there. Uh, this thing works perfectly fine. The colors look great. Let's get, uh, oh, apparently I don't have that installed yet. Ah, well, whatever. You, you guys, you guys get the gist. It's, uh, it's there. It does look like it might be a little on the dark side, uh, a little off in the colors, not a hundred percent certain, but again, uh, with that line and everything there and for what I did to, to get this thing up and running, I think it'll be, I think it'll be fine for a TV to the corner that's going to be able to watch, you know, anything that I want to watch with it. I'm trying to see if I have anything on here that's a uh, really high definition, but I don't really have anything in my Plex library that's a uh, super high def. So anyways, you guys, you guys get the point of what this is. Um, there's something on the Roku channel, maybe, which isn't even on. Uh, so all in all, what did I do? Oh, you can see that ghosting, a lot of ghosting coming in through there. Again, not a re replacement for my my normal TV, but it'll work for what I need it for. So all in all into this thing is um, $20 for a board that I didn't actually even need. So we'll turn on, let's turn on the news and let's, let's mute it too. Um, so that I, this, this will work perfectly fine for me. Again, I still don't understand the fix, but it's a fix nonetheless. As you can see, the previous owner had kept on all the, uh, the scratch resistant stuff from on from originally came on the panel so i'm going to do the same until i get this thing somewhere because i'm going to have to move it around again but otherwise i guess thanks for watching and if you have any information as to why this worked let me know i'd be curious to uh to hear but otherwise thanks again and i'll see you next time